I can't understand anybody who, who doesn't feel deeply, deeply moved by these beautiful, beautiful birds who really spend so much of their life in the air without beating a wing. It's, it's extraordinary. I don't think I've ever seen a group of animals so beautiful. <laughs> you could uh, see an albatross on a nest and it's so impeccable that if you, if you imagine if there was a small ant crawling up its breast, you think, oh, that's, <laughs> I must brush that off. It's just spoiling the image. <laughs> And you just look at these absolutely perfect birds, just dead, and there's nothing you can do. Not for them anymore, at least. You know, so that it really, it really motivates you to, to think, you know, how, how can we make the, the fishing safe? When the small divers hit the water and they probably focus on a particular bait in front of them and, and, and follow it. But because the line is moving so fast, what they don't realize is that there is a hook behind them. When that egg hatches, it takes you know, quite a long time before the chick fledges. And it, that chick may be at sea for between five to 15 years before it will return to the colony and breed again. So any uh, increase in the population may only be seen between five and 15 years down the track. I mainly focused on methods to expedite the sink rate of the baited hooks in the upper reaches of the water column and uh, sort of applied that through all the main commercial longline fisheries that take seabirds in the world, just work through them all systematically. Longline fishery in the Camelot Convention area, that's the Southern Ocean, is albatross friendly and has been for a long time and I'd say that's probably the global best practice. I can't think of a better example. When you work in uh, trying to change a fishing practice or any form of primary industry, I suppose, where people, people are making their living, it ain't easy to make changes. Albatrosses don't uh, abide by geopolitical boundaries and they cross uh, wide ocean basins. And so those threats are uneven through the ocean. And, and that means that we're not actually seeing huge improvements uh, at the breeding colony just yet. Decades of conservation and monitoring work here on Macquarie Island by the Tasmanian Parks and Wildlife Service, the Australian Antarctic Division and Dipipwi are paying off. Threatened seabirds have begun to recover here since vertebrate pests were eradicated on this World Heritage listed island in 2014. On Macquarie Island we have four species of albatross and lots of different seabirds and since the eradication the habitat for all these species has improved with the tussocks returning to the slopes and the vegetation growing. 
The black-browed albatross that was listed as endangered is now considered to be of least concern. But these species still face threats because a large part of their life is lived at sea in places that are really hard to protect. I hope that we can continue to work together um, across fisheries uh, management, across island conservation and with our climate change strategies uh, to really create a better world for albatross.